Hello and welcome to the Jesus Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Lena Elsaya Lee, also known as Lena the Jesus Witch on TikTok and Instagram. The Jesus Witch Podcast is a show dedicated to opening the conversation about including Jesus in witchery practices. The goal of this podcast is to not be evangelical. The goal is to spread the love, light, truth, acceptance, and oneness that is Jesus Christ himself. Here at the Jesus Witch Podcast, we believe all people are loved by God and all people are loved by Jesus. We believe in community and the power of fellowship. We believe in giving whatever you reasonably can to help your neighbor who's in need. And above all, we believe in the power of creating a relationship with Jesus that is authentic and unique to you. Join me for new episodes of the Jesus Witch Podcast every single Monday and be sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. So this week on the Jesus Witch Podcast, I'm excited because I have one of my TikTok mutuals here to talk with me. Her name is Mo. Mo, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mo. I'm a Catholic witch or Christian witch. I don't know. Something. (laughs) Something. (laughs) That's a mood. I like that. (laughs) I'm switching between all of them. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm just a Jesus witch and I should just stick with that. (laughs) Yeah, it's just, it's you know what? It's just a label. You're under that like person who's a witch who also believes in Jesus who also believes in the Abrahamic umbrella you know what yeah, I'm saying yeah. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> it's it's an, a whole like um hodgepodge of terms but anyway um I wanted to have you on the podcast because you are somebody who I know works pretty closely with Mother Mary and I know a lot of people have asked me about that but I don't feel like I'm the best perspective to talk about working <laughs> with her um because like I was telling you before my extent of working with Mother Mary is everybody knows I have two kids and my children are chaos children so (laughs) definitely (laughs) need the patience of Mary (laughs) that's literally what I was gonna say because your girl is not the most patient so I'll literally I'll walk away from my kids and be like Mary what do I do that you know like from what we know about Jesus as a kid I you know I assume he was a little bit of a spicy kid to raise he had it he talked back a little bit so I figure she she has some wisdom for me and and she definitely helps during those moments but that's all I all I work with her on and um there's definitely so much more to her and I would love to explore that with you but before we get into that can you tell me a little bit about your history with like religion and christianity like what brought you to this point yeah so um so i was never raised with a church um i think the extent of me going to the church as a kid was like a handful of times going to a catholic church because my mom kind of missed it um so my my grandparents on both my sides were Catholics. Um, my dad and my mom didn't want anything to do with the church, really. They didn't like it. They didn't like the rules. They didn't like the bad things they were doing. But my dad always made sure that I knew about Jesus. And he, he liked to tell uh, the Bible stories uh, kind of like... Like, we didn't have to read them, and it was never strict, and it was never to take them literally. Uh, It was just kind of, like, for fun and kind of like, hey, try and listen to Jesus. Try and be a good person. Try and take care of the needy. And I was never pushed to read the Bible or anything like that. It was very, very relaxed. So I always had a good relationship with Jesus. And, uh, yeah, I always knew that the church wasn't the best (laughs) didn't didn't do the best things and um I don't think I read the bible until my 20s (laughs) so it's still very new to me uh and then around in middle school my one of my friends introduced me to wicca and I was like I could be a witch that sounds amazing I love everything to do with fantasy and witchcraft, and all that fun stuff, (laughs) and, you know, I explored it a little bit more and more, she invited me to, like, full moon cycle uh, circles, because her mom was a high priestess, and then uh, the age of Tumblr came along, and (laughs) I was deep diving even more into the witchcraft, 
I found out that there are people who are Christian Wiccans. Uh, it was a little bit, a little, a little interesting to combine those two, I guess. And especially because back then, uh, Wicca believes in a god and a goddess. And I was like, who is the goddess? <laughs> we have the god, but who's the goddess? What are we doing here? <laughs> so I just always kind of like, I guess I'll just, it's just an earth goddess. Uh, and then... I was like into witchcraft on and off. I would research it all the time, but I would get I would get scared of ghosts and spirits. <laughs> so I would just like go back and forth. And I think what it was is like I would start to get a little bit of like being able to hear them. And I'm pretty sure it was just always Jesus, but I would get scared and be like, I don't want to hear anyone ever that I can't see. And so I would just like dip. And then eventually I was like, I can't, I can't dip anymore. I have to just be, I found out about Christian witchery and I was like, I just have to do this. <laughs> I have to get through it. I have to stop being scared. Um, and then that's when Jesus kind of came through as a spirit guide. And then I found out about Ashra and angels and saints and it's just it i've been rolling downhill ever since just absorbing everything <laughs> that's that's i feel like that's how it goes you just you find one and then the rest follow and it's like a yeah. little cataclysmic like kind of thing Truly. Um, it's it's i i but i love your story is it feels like it was almost like something inevitable and oh, yeah. but not in like a negative like oh like you know final destination kind of way more in like yeah. a you know positive like this was gonna be <laughs> yeah. Jesus was like you have to talk to me at some point you can't keep running away <laughs> he's I feel like he's good at that but he's also good at giving people like their space and their time to like oh, come yeah. to him when they are ready to do so um so I know you were you were saying like that you know, you, you did, uh, you have God, you have Jesus, and you use Asherah for the uh, goddess, which we both do. I How did you pronounce her name? Asherah. Okay, you Asherah. just have, like, a little bit more of a, like, honestly, probably more of, like, a correct accent on it than me. <laughs> or it's just my southern twang, who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's better than having an obnoxious New York voice. But, um, <laughs> um so... And now a quick break from our show to talk about a few different ways you can help support the Jesus Witch Podcast. One way you can help support the creation of the Jesus Witch Podcast is by becoming a Patreon supporter of the show. Every supporter of the Jesus Witch Podcast on Patreon gets access to our monthly community oracle card readings, as well as access to a secret Discord channel in the Jesus Witch Church. In that channel, you can leave any Jesus Witch questions or suggestions that you may have, and it's just a better place for us to connect as a Patreon community. We currently have five different Patreon tiers for you to choose from to help expand your knowledge on Jesus and Christian witchery. The first tier that we offer is the Mercury tier, and this provides written transcripts of each episode of the Jesus Witch Podcast to make them more accessible and easier to take notes from. The next tier that we have is the Fool, and that provides early access to the Jesus Witch Podcast, as well as ad-free episodes. The following tier is the Magician tier, which helps to expand your Jesus Witch knowledge with tarot spreads to help you connect with the Abrahamic Pantheon and monthly Bible-based spellbook pages. In the Hierophant tier, we go even further with Bible-based spell work. Each month, members of this tier get access to an additional Bible-based spellbook page. I also send you a mini spell kit every single month with the ingredients to cast your spell. With this tier, you also get access to a monthly spell casting circle that happens over Zoom where we cast the spell together and it's a really fun time. Our final tier is the High Priestess tier. This tier gets everything from the previous tiers as well as a one-on-one -on -one call with me over Zoom every single month to talk about your practice, where it's going, and what your goals are spiritually. Another way to help support the Jesus Witch Podcast is by shopping at the Sun and Moon Jesus Witchery Shop on Etsy. Over on my Etsy shop, I offer Talking to Jesus tarot readings, Christian Witch mystery boxes, Bible-based spell oils, astrology readings, and so much more. You can also help support the creation of the Jesus Witch Podcast by sending a donation directly to my PayPal or Cash App. You can find the links to both of those or any of the other ways to help support the Jesus Witch Podcast in the show notes page. And a quick reminder, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcasting app you're currently listening to us on. And give us a rating of five stars because that helps to get the word out about the show. 
If you would like to connect with me further, be sure to join our free Discord group, The Jesus Witch Church, and give me a follow on TikTok and on Instagram at Lena the Jesus Witch. Now let's go back to our show. What, like, I, when you were going on this journey, how did you initially get, like, introduced to Mother Mary and start working with her? Right. So I've always loved Mother Mary, like, even as a kid. Um, every once in a while, I'd go to, like, those Bible studies they would have at school where it was, like, this little van or bus that would come up and you could skip class and study, the like, a Bible verse for a little bit. Um if I knew they were talking about Mother Mary, I was like, I want to go, because she just fascinated me. And I also think, um, you know, it's because my my ancestors were all Catholic, and Catholics love Mary. So, at first, I just thought that I wasn't going to work with her until I was a mother. You know, I didn't really see the point of it. Uh, She wasn't really reaching out I would learn about her but I was just kind of like this doesn't feel like something I'm supposed to do right now uh (laughs) and then my friend gave me a rosary and then my friend randomly found a statue of Mary and gave it to me too and then I found an oracle deck for mother Mary and I was like okay all right (laughs) I guess this is it and then all the podcasts I was listening to uh at least, like, the witchy ones, they started talking about Mother Mary, too. And I was like, okay, all right. (laughs) What do I need to do about this? So, uh, obviously, it all started with, like, the rosary. And she kind of came into my life. I guess just needed a mother's love, and she has a lot of wisdom with like witchy stuff honestly she's very mystical it's weird well I think because of the culture that she grew up in it was a lot more of a mystical environment if you think of like that you know Judeo-Palestine region at the time yeah um it was definitely a lot more mystical and you had like characters such as, I mean, obviously Joseph from Genesis is a long time before Mary, but you have characters such as him or who were practicing divination within the Jewish tradition or Moses yeah. who was talking to a burning bush. So yeah. she definitely grew up with a more mystical Jewish lens just because of the period of history that she grew up in, you know? Yeah. That does make so, sense. Yeah. I'm yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, are there? I know you said you're like newer to like reading the Bible, but are there any like Bible verses or like resources that have helped you connect with her specifically? Oh yeah, so there's definitely books. Um, one of the books that really got me to deep dive with her concerning the rosary is um, the Way of the Rose. I was waiting this whole time for you to say that. Yes. That, it's that was one almost, of my first witchy books I read too it's so good yes it is it's so good uh and it's so good to kind of like approach her without the uh strict religious doctrine you know and so that that definitely helped and I was like uh I was like oh this is great you know she's like she reminds me a lot of Ashra with how motherly she is to everyone like she's everyone's mother um and then what else do I have? another book that i read recently is mary as the er- early christians knew her the mother of jesus in three ancient texts uh so the uh the professor she looks at three different um early christian texts uh, the first one is the Gospel of James, which isn't in the Bible, but it's the story of how Mary was conceived through her mom and dad, and then her life up until she gave birth to Jesus. Uh, so that's definitely a really good one to read. And there's... There's a bunch of prayers out there for Mary. There's so many. You can Google anything and like 10 will come up. And then 
Bible verses. So I'll use Bible verses if I'm doing a spell with her or if I'm trying to get in a certain like meditative meditative state. So one of these is Luke 2.19. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And that that um Mary pondering things, putting it in her heart, that's common in the gospel of James too. Uh so I like to say that and kind of like think, okay, what what was it like for her? How did she get into that state? Uh, especially because I have ADHD. So trying to focus <laughs> on the lessons that I'm being taught from my spirit team, I definitely need to like sit and think. Um, and then another good one I like is Acts one fourteen. They all join together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And I like this one because it shows that Mary was a part of Jesus' work. And it shows that she was uh, she was committed, obviously, if she's going to be the mother of Jesus. And, you know, it's good. I like to say it sometimes before I pray the rosary. Uh, because the rosary is just, it's a lot of prayers over and over and over again. <laughs> so I'm just kind of like, this is the energy you need to have, Mo. Just just keep praying, see what happens. <laughs> and um, the last one I like that I've used uh, in spells is Luke one thirty five. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Um, and I like to use that for, like, blessings on new mothers. I'll usually take out the last sentence, because that one is like, they're not about to have the Son of God. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but the beginning part... I like to use that as a little blessing or a blessing spell on new mother, m- new mothers. I like that. I love that. I love those verses a lot. My favorite one that you mentioned was Luke two nineteen. I was curious if you were going to mention that one because that's one that I personally think a lot about, especially during the Christmas season. My mm-hmm. kids and I we have this book. Um, I forgot what it was called, but it's this little like poem about you know Jesus and his birth and like you know the it's basically a biblically accurate like Christmas book. And they use that verbiage, like Mary storing things up in her heart and like pondering all these things in her heart in this book. And I yeah. swear, every, every time I read it, I'm like in tears, like bawling. It's like <laughs> the point where my son will be it's like, It's so beautiful. <laughs> He's like waiting for me to cry. And it's the same thing with the, the song, Mary, Did You Know? She yeah. like, is basically, oh, um, that I feel like that song is like really like taking that verse and extending yeah. it. You know, yeah, and like yeah. asking you, did, did you know, like when you were thinking and pondering all these things in your heart, did you yeah. know that yeah. this is what Jesus was going to do? Like that, <laughs> that verse is so powerful. So I'm glad that you mentioned it. It's a really, yeah. it's a great one to use in spell work. It's just, and like you said, like being with somebody who has like ADHD and like all over the place, like that right. is a really good way to like narrow being like, okay, well, we're pondering in our heart right now. We're not thinking about yeah. other things kind of thing. <laughs> good self-discipline yeah um but like another thing I want to learn from you is what does like a good day like a daily like a good daily practice with mother Mary obviously not every day is perfect so when I have people sit here and say their ideal day of working that's (laughs) not how it is every day nope (laughs) but what would like an ideal working day with mother Mary look like so an ideal day would be uh, me lighting her candle and then praying the rosary, uh, which, you know, there's the rosary is relatively simple and you can make it even more simple than, you know, what the Catholic Church has kind of made it out to be. Like, honestly, all you need is the Hail Mary and the Our Father and you're good. You're golden. Uh, on an ideal day, I would try and do either... I would either try and meditate on the mysteries or there's 
another way thing I like to do, which is on each Our Father, I will choose a scene in the Bible and try and kind of put myself in that scene. And then it's kind of like uh, you're like you could go to the um, the wedding at Cana and kind of put yourself there. And then there's Mary there. There's Jesus there. You can try and talk to them. And I think it's really good to it's helped me at least un- understand the Bible more, especially because the Bible's still kind of new to me. Um, helps me contemplate those stories, but also how the uh, the rosary gets me into a meditative state where I can really just be like, yo, what's happening? And so the rosary and then. I would like to, I like to do a little prayer, kind of talk to her, and I'll use, I use these, it's called Mother Mary Oracle, and I like it because it has uh, a bunch of pictures of Mary, but they're all like dark skin too, so it's not white. They, they make her look Middle Eastern. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> still look. Like, I have geez. that exact deck. I love it so much. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. Uh, and then I will, I like to do either do the work in her honor or I'll read about her or even I'll do like fiber arts, like crochet or mm-hmm. sewing, because one of the things she did is um, in the gospel of James, at least it mentions her weaving and she would help weave for the temple. Uh, which is also something that's associated with Ashra. So, you know, I can't, I try to be quiet. I try to like give it. It's great for either the morning or at night when I'm either trying to wake up or I'm trying to wind down uh, because it's quiet, it's relaxing, and she just has a really nice energy to her. Uh, and then if I'm also <laughs> on like a really, really good day, I'll get her roses too, because uh, roses are very much associated with her, obviously, like the rosary. Uh, a lot of original rosaries were made out of roses, like the beads. So I'll get her a nice bouquet of rose- roses and I'll do the, I'll do the rosary and like the biggest way you can (laughs) and then it's just you know hanging out with her and talking to her and making sure I'm taking care of myself you know self-care is definitely something she likes yeah I definitely get that vibe from her too I think that's a lot of like divine feminine energy Mm -hmm. is this especially within the Abrahamic because self-care is literally like one of the commandments with like the day of rest kind yeah. of whole thing you yeah. know <laughs> you think about it <laughs> that's true that's very true I think those are really like those are like good ways to work with them I, her I also feel like they're practical you know what oh, I'm saying yeah. like even if you can't do all of those things in one day you could definitely do one even if it's just like you said saying the Hail Mary or an Our Father in the beginning of the day and yeah. calling it a day um oh, yeah. Like, there's definitely a lot that you could do, and it seems, like, pretty straightforward. Um, But I'm curious, like, what has connecting with Mother Mary, like, taught you specifically? Like, about her and about, like, faith? Um, What has been your biggest takeaway? So, one of my biggest takeaways, and one that uh, I really needed, because when I jumped back into everything, for, like, it was, like, the final time that I was jumped back, and I was like, I'm not turning away from this anymore. Um, I got a little too caught up in trying to be fancy and trying to be really ritualistic with it and trying to get all the candles and set up an altar space, uh, which, you know, I completely forgot all of my father's teachings from, from my childhood because he was like, you just take a drive and talk to Jesus and that counts as prayer. And I was like, oh, I'm. So Mother Mary came in and she was basically like, just pray the rosary to me. That's it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I looked into the rosary and I also 
found out that you can really customize the rosary. Like, you can add whatever prayers you want, and, you know, it can be as simple as, like I said, just the Hail Mary and the Our Father. And, you know, that really helped me kind of take a step back and be like, nothing about this has to be complicated. Uh, You know, the rosary, there's, it's, you learn the prayers and that's it. That's all you have to do. There's no trying to get better at it. There's no, like, quote unquote, leveling up with it. You just learn the prayers and then you can meditate and you get it. You get all the blessings and you get the love and the uh, connection with her. And that's all you have to do. Um, and then, you know, she also has taught me how to how to take care of myself. And uh, she's, she, <laughs> she's very sassy about it if I don't. You know, like a mother. <laughs> she'll, she'll <laughs> she's like... She'll just tell me, like, why aren't you taking care of yourself? Why are you trying to pray and do all these things with me when you haven't even taken a shower for three days? And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, that's more important than this spiritual stuff. <laughs> they really be like that sometimes. Do. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, like, frustrating. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it's like, they're, if you're having a rough time, they're, they're like, we don't care what state you're in. You mm-hmm. can come pray to us. We don't care if your room is dirty or if you have offerings or not. But if you're trying to do spiritual stuff without, and you're ignoring on purpose, like the other stuff that you have to do, they're like, what are you <laughs> <No>. doing? <laughs> and like, uh-uh. I've like tried to do things like, 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 you know, spells or like talk to Jesus or whatever, where I literally have like a to-do list and my candle just genuinely wouldn't be. Yes. And he's like, oh no, my- get the fuck out of here. Go do something else. I'll start praying the rosary and I just see like Mother Mary's face and she's shaking her head at me. <laughs> she's, she's like, like not right it. now. <laughs> she's like, the only thing I'm going to come help you do is come help you take a shower and cook a meal. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. But sometimes you need that. Yeah. So it's okay. It's 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 okay. And it's it just shows that she cares about you ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She knows when I need to sit down and pray and mm-hmm. when I need to take care of myself. <laughs> yeah. No, that's and that's like that's the best part about working with like guides that are genuinely like aligned with your purpose and your practice is that they really just help you get to where you need to be. And oh, like oh, yeah. do it in a very respectful and helpful and like practical manner even like with mundane things i really i really appreciate that um about the deities at least i work with and sounds like the same with the way you work with mother mary but anyway this has been a really really good conversation (laughs) i learned a lot about working with mother mary um is there anything like else that you just want to share like any final thoughts uh so i guess the other thing about mary is that she also has a lot of different like I guess versions of her like it's all mm-hmm. Mary but you know you can you can pick a certain version of her if you're struggling with something in particular like there's Mary undoer of knots if you feel like your road is just being super blocked by a lot of things or you're having trouble connecting inside of yourself because there's just blockages you can look up uh prayers to Mary and doer of not and you can do spell work with that so that you can help open open yourself up open your road up mm-hmm. just hit my mic um there's um Mary is also super syncretized with a bunch of different goddesses like there's um what is it oh my god um Mary of Guadalupe I yes feel like I just, yeah yeah she she's syncretized with the Aztec goddess. There's um she could be syncretized with Diana, the Roman goddess. Mm-hmm. I think there's I was uh, Mary. literally about to say you, you pulled yeah. the words right out of my mouth. The Madonna yeah. in Italy became yeah. Diana. Yeah. Or Diana became the Madonna the other way. Yeah. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Um there's the I don't know why all these names are slipping me now, but there's the version of Mary with 
it's like the sorrows and she has all the swords in her heart. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through something really, really rough, you can call on her. I think that's literally just mother of sorrows. If I'm, if I'm correctly, if I'm correct. Probably. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Probably something simple. And my brain is like, you don't get to remember this anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So, and, um, you know, and you know, if that overwhelms you, once again, it's all just Mary. Mm-hmm. Every version is Mary. But if for some reason you feel called to a certain aspect of Mary, they they, they can be really helpful. Like I've definitely called on uh, Mary and Durer of Knots for spell work to try and get my life together. Yeah, I and I, I think that it's like, it's. I don't feel like it's important to necessarily know all the different types of Mary, but like, it's important to know that you could like yeah. find a different version. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Or like find something that might resonate a little bit more with you. Because yeah. I, again, like for everybody, just mama Mary is not going to resonate for some people. Yeah. The Mary and doer of not, not to resonate or the Mary of sorrows will not resonate or mm-hmm. they'll resonate with working her with her in a more Italian tradition that look, makes yeah. her look more like Diana sort of thing. So it's oh, yeah. definitely like, I love that you brought that up to show that there's many different ways and many different aspects that you can Uh work with her in. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always liked all her different aspects because I feel like it brings, it makes her Mm multi-dimensional because the Catholic church seems to really focus on like the mother and the virgin part of her, virgin part of her, but all these aspects and all these different types uh, really shows me how versatile she is and how, you know, she was a human, you know, she had her own personality, she had her own hopes and dreams, and, you know, she had her hurts and her sorrows and her anger, and, you know, it's just nice, that, that's why I like Christianity, honestly, like all the figures, because they're, they're just so human. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's that's a big part. They God really used people. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that's the cool part. <laughs> it's great. I love it. But yeah. This was, such, this was such a good chat. Like I'm I'm I learned a lot. I feel like people who are listening to this is gonna are gonna learn a lot. And like, you know, people who are interested in working with Mother Mary, I feel like this is a good starting point, a good place to like get advice from. Um, but where, if people want to ask you more questions about Mother Mary or connect with you and follow you on the interwebs, where can they find you? Of course. So I have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a TikTok. They're all Mimo Peaches, M-I-M-O Peaches. And I do, I'm not active on it right now, but I plan on it. (laughs) I have a doula (laughs) Instagram and it's called Your Peachy Doula. And I, I love that. It's so cute. <laughs> thank you. And I definitely plan on uh, posting. I want to post on that Instagram, like, doula as uh, spells. So, like, yeah. spells you could do for fertility, all the different kinds of fertility you could be going through, um, for spells for different um, months of your pregnancy, stuff for postpartum. You know, because my, can, the, my first idea was an opening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, that's just where my brain went. <laughs> they got to come out somehow. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, and things got to open to do so. So you know what? Anyway, <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> I will leave the links for all of your socials and the, the doula page and everything in the show notes page so people can connect with you. Thank, thank you. you again for being here. Of course. I loved it.